All right, it's Flaming Dragon Friday. It I, is. I just I want you to know before we get into this. Number one, I'm hitting the under. All right, once the monologue starts, I'm hitting the under. But I heard something on the way into work today that I just have to share with everybody the condensed version of it because I'm low key freaking out. All right, it's better be good. All right, so I, around the 2000s, all right, in Arkansas, you know they have you know the a ton of bluffs and wilderness <clears throat> and parks yeah. and stuff like that. It's a beautiful state, really. Uh, a six-year-old named Haley Z Zega and her grandparents were walking around on a trail. Uh, she wanted to go see a waterfall. The grandparents were like, no, we're not gonna walk that far. So she got upset and was like, I'm not moving until we go see a waterfall. So they're like, oh, well, we're gonna leave you out here. And they start kind of walking forward and she gets up and starts following them. She's a little bit behind them. Then all of a sudden they turn around one time and she's just gone, just absolutely gone, all right? They run around for like an hour trying to find her, cannot find her. She's only six years old. She couldn't have gone that far. So they called the police and the state of Arkansas launched like the largest search they've ever had for a missing person. It's like over 150 people were looking within like a 10 to 15 mile radius and for 51 hours. So over two days, they cannot find this girl. All right, she's six what? years old. For over two days, they can't find her. So two of the searchers turned a corner one time uh, and they're two miles outside of the search radius, so they okay. went to look outside of it, okay. and they see her sitting down there reading a book, and she's fine. That's terrifying. And they're like, already. are you Haley Zega? She's okay. like, yes. They take her to the hospital, and they're like, what happened? And she's six years old, so it's hard for her to exactly communicate what happened, but she says, well, I was walking, I was looking down, and then I looked up, and there was just a wall of trees, just an absolute wall of trees. And she said she just kept walking through the wall of trees, and she followed this river, and went up and slept on top of one of the bluffs. And they know exactly what bluff she's talking about. They're like, well, how did our helicopters with thermal imaging not see this girl if she slept on the bluff? So then they ask her, how did you get down from the bluff to the place where they found you? And she, cause there's only one way and it's, it's difficult. You have to follow like a certain trail, a certain path. She's like, well, my imaginary friend that I met out there, oh, Alicia God. showed me. Oh. And they're like, all right, so you invented this hey, imaginary we friend to, you know, for the trauma, to kind of compensate for the trauma. And she's like, yeah, we sang songs and told jokes. And then she starts singing the songs that they sung together. And understand this, the grandparents and the parents said she's never had imaginary friend before this and never had one after it. So the story makes like national headlines and it gets put in print about her getting help from the Alicia girl. And come to find out 23 years before that, all right, and she told, the rescuers that Alicia was about four years old. She had black hair and brown eyes. 23 years before that, a four-year-old named Alana with black hair and brown eyes got lost and died on that bluff. Chill out. Like, that's why I don't go in the woods, Chill man. Out. That's why I don't go in too far in the woods or in why the water. Why are you terrifying me in the, on a Friday? I'm just saying, though, how can you not, you think a six-year-old made that up? There's no way. Well, how, did they, well, how do they not, the let me ask you this. Let me ask and you. Telling the joke. How do they not see her in the thermal imaging, though? That's, I have no idea. But you think that that girl's gonna tr try and trick a helicopter with thermal imaging? Her or Alicia? I mean, is Alicia? I mean, just, I mean. Look, I don't. Magical powers? Like, again, I don't, you can believe or not. I'm just telling you what the six year old girl said. That's this a on hell the news? of a coincidence. Yeah, she was on Dateline NBC. Oh it's, God, so it's real. Yes, yes, it is real. Like the country. I blame the grandparents. Yeah. NFL playoff football continues this weekend. We're going to break down the keys to victory for each team. Mike Golick Jr. joins us to list his favorite playoff bets, and there's one in there that I love. And we're taking your calls and predictions live at 8.15 a.m. Eastern, so get ready to call in. I'm Jake Crane. It's Flaming Dragon Friday. Let's get excited. This is Crane & Company. Now, you guys already know that I think Dead Eyes Joey B is going to take down Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City and Arrowhead again this coming Sunday. But when it comes down to the Niners and Eagles game, it seems like everybody is just ready to count San Francisco out and watch Jalen Hurts and the Eagles just cruise into the Super Bowl. Well, to quote someone who covers college football, who you probably know, not so fast, my friend. I'm here to tell you today that the San Francisco 49ers will beat the Eagles this Sunday, making Brock Let's Get Dirty Purdy the first rookie QB to win a conference championship ever, or since Joe Montana. And the reason I think they're gonna win is simple. 
The Eagles' best attribute on offense is balance. They are incredibly balanced run to pass when it comes to effectiveness. Hurts in the ground game are deadly enough to add hats to the box, giving their putt throw receivers like Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, even Dallas Goddard at tight end, more one-on-one -on -one opportunities with the secondary, which obviously increases their odds of getting open. If the run game isn't cooking, though, Hurts in that offense struggles to find that balance. And they struggle not to just score touchdowns in the red zone, but move the ball in between the 20s at all. So I think Fred Warner and Armstead and that San Francisco defense are going to make Philly one-dimensional. And I think they find a way to win this game by a field goal in overtime. So I'm calling it right now. Give me San Francisco over Philly on their way to the Super Bowl to play Joey B and the Bengals. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the co-host to my left. That's right. All right. David Cohn is currently at the hospital right now with his beautiful wife getting ready to welcome their daughter into the world where, you know, we may hear from Cone, we may not. Uh, I don't know the play-by-play. He's in the chat. Uh, he's in the chat. Yes. Okay, all right. So we're going to hear from Cone. Replacement Cone, here's your chance. All right, before I even get to Flaming Dragon, because we all know I'm hitting the under and not calling him by his government name. Here's your chance. You got the Niners? Are you going with the Eagles? Replacement Cone, here we go. Hmm. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay, you got to respect it. He's going Eagles. I understand it. Uh, and I want to go ahead and bring in the co-host to, uh, co to my right. It's Friday. Yes. And I will do nothing but call you Flaming Three Dragon. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a Good. half. Good, it's already hit. Three and a half. It's already hit. Uh, I don't think we can include hit. Cone since he's not here. No, we're not including Cone since he's not here. But, uh, so you're going 49ers. Flame, Flaming Dragon, because again, it is Friday. You know what time that is. This is Flaming Dragon. So you're going 49ers. I am because you just are in love with the Rock Pretty story. No, no. I I I think this game is going to I think both teams honestly aren't going to be able to run the ball very effectively. You watch the Niners struggle to run on the interior against the Cowboys facing the Eagles and and you know the guys from Mordor they have in that front seven. Uh it's going to be tough. I I think it's a tight game. I think it's back yeah. and forth. I think it's a field goal battle. Uh, you may get a big special teams player or something like that, but this feels like an overtime game to it me. It does, doesn't it? I feel like the San Francisco 49ers are going to get the ball, go kick a field goal, and the Eagles are either going to miss a field goal uh, or go for it on fourth and short and not get it. I, everybody's picking the Eagles. I am going with the Niners. I can just feel it. I don't feel like it's a bad pick. It's sitting at a line at minus two and a half Eagles right now, mm -hmm. over under 46. The difference to me in this game, I was really interested to see the matchups up front. One, Christian McCaffrey somewhat banged up. Debo Samuel somewhat banged up. Well, Eagles have one of the best offensive lines in the country, if not the best. Obviously, you have Trent Williams on the other side. So it's going to be, I think Jalen Hurts has to be the difference. Uh, his legs, what has been the difference the entire year for the Eagles? Mm -hmm. His legs. Yeah. Right? And you be, and the only way to realistically beat a defense like this, which has kind of struggled in the back end with Ward, their safety is phenomenal for the 49ers. But the weapons on third down, if the Eagles can stay on schedule, third and five or less, I think the Eagles win this game. I think Brock Purdy, I said this last week, I believe in Brock now. This is going to be a little bit different about it. This is at Philly. Mm -hmm. All right? This is at Philly, which is a tough place to play anyway. But I can see this being a field goal game. Or I can see maybe the Eagles by four or five in this game. I think home field advantage is going to be big. I think Jalen Hurts' feet are going to be big. And I think the Eagles are just a little bit better of a team. Well, you know, I one of the reasons that I like the Niners is because last week they became one-dimensional and still found a way to win. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, defensively they were able to turn Dak over. Obviously Dak didn't help himself out. But Brock Purdy didn't make the big mistake. I, I just feel like if both of these run games go down, I, I like Brock Purdy as a passer with the with the weapons weapons that he has just as much as I do Jalen Hurts. And Brock Purdy and the Niners have just found ways to win. The Eagles have won. They've had a ton of success. They're the number one seed. I get it. But the Niners have just found ways to win. I think Shanahan is going to come up with a hell of a plan. They've been resting McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell. Look, at this point, you want everybody to practice, but these guys aren't going to forget. Sitting in a Drew Barrymore 51st date situation. Uh, so to me, again, the key to this game on both sides is how do you react when the run game is not working? That, that to me, is the biggest thing. And then when you look over at the Bengals Chiefs, this game is, is almost the polar opposite of what I think the Eagles and the Niners is going to be. That 47 and a half number, we're going to talk with Mike Golick Jr. about it. I think they're going to blow that out of the water. It feels low. Even though, even though Mahomes' ankle is banged up, I believe that Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid do such a good job of utilizing the pass game, not only in the intermediate or in the deep third, 
But in the short game, the quick game, the screen game, they have the weapons with Kadarius Tony and McKinnon and and Pacheco. Uh, they just they have a little bit of everything. And even though Mahomes can't extend the play either inside or outside of the pocket, inside of the pocket with that ankle, he'll be able to do it. But outside of the pocket, that's when the Chiefs hit most of their big plays. Right? Is during the scramble drill. Why do they have so many explosives? You know, more explosives than than Q from 007. Well, it's because uh, you know they have the ability when, when when you look at them to hit you from different areas. Even if Patrick's not extending the play, like I said, from outside the pocket, and then obviously Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon and hell everybody that's good at football named Joe is playing yeah. for the Bengals. Uh, at the end of the day, I. I just, it's going to come down like it always does to who can put the ball in the rectangle with the pain in it in the red zone. Because this is a game where, like, a field goal in the Niners Eagles game is worth 10 times as much as a field goal is. That's why the crazy thing over the under is the same in the both games. I know. I know. It's a one point. Feels like a trap. It has to be. Like, because typically, and I got some great betting advice one time from a guy that's done it for a long time. When you have two explosive offenses, take the under. Mm -hmm. When you have two really good defenses, take the over. But There are circumstances where that doesn't necessarily always work. And in this game, you've shown me, I mean, the Bengals show me they can score, whether it's raining, sleeting, snowing, or, you know, raining cats and dogs. And we know the Chiefs are going to be able to put the ball in the end zone. I just have a hard time believing that that under is going to hit. But that red zone area is such a key area. And to me, I think the Bengals are going to win. But I think Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy do the best job in the world when you get into the red zone with the weapons they have. And, and McKinnon's going to take some wildcat snaps. Well, I was, the that. first thing I want to see is how's Patrick moving. How's he moving on that, that ankle? Yeah, good. I know. How about, it's, uh, hearing it and seeing it, obviously, you know, from a coach's eyes, is, is going to be is is just different. And and Patrick, when he can extend the play, that's when the Chiefs are at their best. But I'm somewhat interested to see the run game from both these teams, especially the Chiefs, because if the Chiefs can establish a run early, because this Bengals defense since the playoffs started, been playing phenomenal. Looks a lot like last year, doesn't phenomenal. it? Phenomenal. It's amazing how they just that flip just started to switch when the playoffs came here. But it, which team can establish the run? Because you saw the Bengals somewhat with Joe Mixon uh, winning the line of scrimmage uh, in their last uh, meetup. And now the Chiefs with Pacheco, can they do the same thing? Because it's going to open up your offense. So I'm wondering to see if the Chiefs are going to do that, one, to kind of uh, help Patrick's ankle, right? And two, establish the ball down the field. Chiefs haven't really been explosive. Yeah. Down the field, it's the offense has completely changed so much since Tyreek Hill left, and they're this they're still being just as good as Tyreek Hill from a yard standpoint. But it's everything short, everything's quick. So I want because the Bengals are going to push the ball down the field with that amount of weapons. You you just have to Jamar Chase, T Higgins, Boyd. You have Hayden Hurst at tight end, and the offensive lines playing. Uh, I mean, pretty good. I'm interested to see how Chris Jones does. I guess well, that. here's the I'm looking at Chris Jones on that in, and they put Chris Jones at end sometime. I mean, he's that versatile. Yeah. But from an interior defensive line standpoint, both these teams are able to push the pocket so well on the inside, which is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than being able to rush from the outside because you don't have to be a geometry major to realize the quickest way from point A to B is a straight line. And when you're lined up in the interior, you can get there quicker than you can on the edge. So DJ Reader for the Bengals is absolutely balling right now. And we know Chris Jones has made a career uh, out of balling. Uh, so uh, watching those two guys is going to be very interesting, but I agree with you 100%. And If you're going to bet the game, which we know we're all going to bet the game, so you better get ready, there's only one sports book to use. All right, we have four NFL teams left, two conference championship games, and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL, because we're counting down to Super Bowl 57, and new customers can bet just $5, and you get $200 in free bets instantly. It's a hell of a deal. And if you're not a new customer, you can feel the conference championship thrills with stepped up, same game parlays. You can take your shot at an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg up to 100%. I'm telling you, I'm taking the over in the Bengals game. I'm ta- I have decided I am probably going to take the under all right, in the in the in the uh, Eagles Niners game, but I'm still flirting with it. We're going to talk with Mike Golick Jr. about that because I feel like it's going overtime. One of these feels like a trap. 24-24 overtime game. I just believe it. But that's at DraftKings. Download the sportsbook right now and use our code Booster B W O S T E R to get that five dollars uh, for two hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Look, DraftKings, it's the move. All right, yeah, we've told you that a million times. You guys know this. Uh, we love it. It's the trust tree. You can find it there at DraftKings. But Flaming Dragon, what is going on in the Booster Club? I need an update. Let's go to Nate State. All Nate right. State. $2 donation. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Nate. Nate. Every time Jake says, Blaine, I'm doing 25 push-ups. Well, guess what? You're not going to be sore after this one, Blaine. Well, he's got to get a little work in now, so at least give him two. 
All no. Right. At least give them two. It's for the people. It's Maybe at the you. end. Maybe at the end. Maybe at the end. All right, I'm going to hold you to that. We have a $10 donation from Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Flaming Dragon, bro, I got your back on the ranch versus honey mustard situation. Boom, roasted. Tell Jake to show you the DM I sent him on Twitter and put some respect on ranch's name. Oh, Let's yes. Let's sit here and yes. say, you like ranch. No, I like ranch. Yeah. All right, but I think honey mustard is a more versatile sauce. It's not. I, it is. It's not, it, what you don't you, really, I don't think deep down you really think that. What, I think what, you're just trying. What, so you call me a liar? I, no, I, I just think you're trying to start an argument. That's what I think you're trying to do. Why? If you I was going to start. I've never seen you just sit here and just destroy honey mustard. Blaine, oh, Charlie's honey mustard is one of the greatest things that have ever graced this planet. That, oh, tra oh, tra oh Charlie's honey mustard is good. Okay. Oh, oh, we're, oh. We're just oh, saying Charlie? honey mustard in general. Right? You just don't have What can oh, you put ranch on that you around? can't put honey mustard on or that people don't Pizza. put it on? I, people dip their crust. So when you take bread, Say are pizza. you dipping honey mustard? But it's like just you. No, it's not. If you dip your crust, pizza crust, not dipping pepperoni pizza in honey mustard. That's wings. not what I'm saying. Wings. You, wings and honey mustard? Yeah. You never dip wings? They have honey mustard flavored wings, genius. Yeah, I know, but no one. So you're telling me. You've walked into a wing place and you've seen someone dip in their wings in honey mustard. Yes, I've seen that before. I've seen it at Wingstop before. There's no way. <laughs> There's good. no way. Okay. There's no, no way. I'm not arguing this till the cows come home with you. Uh, let's go to Jess. Uh, Paul, what's up, Jess? He says, I think the 49ers versus the Eagles is going to be higher scoring than we think. Both offense have some weapons. Well, you know, we watched it with the Cowboys game. I mean, both offense had weapons, but sooner or later, those defenses are just so good. Well, like, the question is, all right, where, where are you going to steal some points at? Like, is somebody going to run a kickback? Somebody going to block a punt? I just don't see a bunch of, of 60, 70, 85-yard touchdown plays. I think if you're going to go score a touchdown, you're, it's going to take you at least six or seven, which is going to eat that clock. And both of these teams want to establish the run because their pass is built off the run with play action and boots and waggles and, and RPOs and things like that. So to me, I again, if both teams get the run shut down and they start reverting to, well, I guess we got to throw it mode. And I'm not saying not to pitch backwards. I'm not saying don't throw it on first down. I'm not saying don't throw a quick game on first down. You need to do that. But overall, when you're looking at the totality of the game, both these teams want to establish the run. That way they can make those safeties start to creep down. And you get those one-on-one -on -one situations with Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and then from the Niners with Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle and then Dallas Goddard from the Eagles. You get those, those chances. So to me, I feel like that flow of the game. But if it's going over time, if I'm saying it's 24-24 and the, the Niners are going to win 27-41, to 41 and, and, or excuse me, 27-24, that's 51 total points. That's, uh, that's smashing the over by about five. So many points. Um, Andy J says, Cincy 3 0 versus uh, healthy Mahomes. He says, Take Cincy's uh, money line, Bengals, easy. I took literally four days ago, I, and I tweeted out, I took the Bengals plus four and a half and the over at 47 and a half at plus 200. I feel like that's stealing. On, but that's DraftKings, they give you great odds. Uh, let's go to Maddie Eyes. What's up, Maddie? With the Bears having the most money to spend in the offseason, what do you think they do and what do you think they should do? Well, in my opinion, any talk about getting a new quarterback is stupid to me. Stupid to me. I, I don't. I, I, if I was the GM or the owner, the minute you started saying anything about a new quarterback, you're fired. Like, the, the, there's no questions asked. Justin Fields has a chance to be very, very special. All right, now he's going to continue to become a better passer, turn from more of a thrower into a passer, but from a running standpoint, and I know people get hurt and beat up and stuff like that, but he was running without any weapons. If you're ever going to get beat up, it's because you're running without weapons and you're the whole team. He was able to make it through this year, and I thought it was smart that they sat on the last game. But if I'm the Bears, I, I traded Robert Quinn. I traded Roquan Smith. Yep. I think you wouldn't be wrong to take Jalen Carter with the first pick. All right? I don't think you'd be crazy to take Will Anderson Jr. with the first you pick. trade that pick. But, but yes, if it was me, though, I would trade that pick because it's not like you've got to get knocked down very far. Mm -hmm. If I make a call to the Texans or I make a call to the Colts or somebody that really wants to move up there or the, you know, the, the Seahawks, maybe somebody like that, I'm not going to fall too far and I can stack some picks because one pick is not going to make the Bears legitimate. Mm -hmm. They need at least, at least three hits in the draft and make some moves in free agency, but you got the paper to do it right now. It's Now is your time, right? We look at these teams that are having success now. Uh, the Bengals, Joe Burrow, still on a rookie contract, right? 
J- Justin Fields and the Bears still on a rookie contract, right? Now's the time where you've got the bread to be able to go out there and, and put the horses together. Assemble the A-team. A Everybody get together. Let's, you know, captain planet this thing. What Earth, would you wind, give and fire. What, 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 what would be your prize for the pick? What, what, would you, what would you want? If I was the Bears, I want a first-round pick. I want your first-round pick. I want your second-round pick. And... Past that, I think you go a lot of different ways. Because whoever calls them going to be desperate, right? They're going to try sure. to get that top three for CJ Arise. Well, it's like, are you are you going to Kevin Costner draft day this thing and wait till the last second to make somebody just throw the absolute bag at you? But I want at least a first round pick and a second round pick, and after that, you know, if you get a fourth or maybe some cash considerations. It'll be or, interesting to see what the Panthers do if they try to move. Well, on. we're going to get to. I know the we're going to get to that, but I know they're at nine in the draft. All right, let's go to Travis Elrod. Hashtag Ask Crane and Company. Of the four teams left. Which teams needs which team needs to win the turnover battle to win this weekend? Uh, the Chiefs. I I, I just look the, again. We talk about Chris Jones and and are the Chiefs bad on defense? No, I just don't think they're going to be able to stop the Bengals. I think there's a whole hell of a lot better chance of the Bengals being able to stop the Chiefs, especially with Mahomes being beat up, than the Chiefs to stop the Bengals. So therefore, you're going to need a couple turnovers. Maybe you get one in the red zone, but that's where Joe Burrow is so deadly. You know, you try and say, do you say, all right, well, let's heat them up and just play man on the outside and hope to God that T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst and the rest of the crew don't pull our pants down in front of the whole whole cafeteria, you know, high, cafeteria in the high school. Uh, all right, you hope that. So that's the worst. Are, did you, are you over that yet? Or huh? Are you still okay? I know. That, that, trauma, that didn't happen to me, but I know it happened to somebody. Really, oh, had to. Yeah, had for to. sure. No, but it's to me, it's the Chiefs. Turn over the Bengals because again, are you going to heat Joey B up and take that chance? Or are you going to sit back and let him pick you apart and play that's operation? What they did last time. Got to pick your poison. Yeah, I, again, that's why Joey B is he's dead inside. How are you going to kill him? All right, let's go to Mo Bamba. Uh, hashtag Ask Crane and Company. Will a win against the 49ers get Jalen uh, Hurts haters off his back, or do they just hate him more? What will it take for people to realize that he is not mid? Or First he, off, if, oh, well, maybe he is mid. I don't know. It says he's. Then there's four arrows. Going this way, then it says mid. So I don't know. Yeah, no, Jalen. If anybody says that Jalen Hurts is mid, they're mid, and I don't take them seriously anymore. But, but having said that, just like with any good team, he is a very important part, uh, uh, part of a machine with a lot of very important parts. Okay, uh, that, again, I will go back to balance. Now, the better you do, the the more haters you get. Like a collection of haters. No, no, there's no player in the world that everybody's like, oh, I just love that guy. Everybody loves them. Anybody that's won at all or had success or, you know, in today's society speaks their mind, you're going to have a ton of haters. You judge success by how many haters you have. That's the truth. So the more haters Jaylen, the more haters that Jalen Hurts gets, obviously the better that, that he's doing. And he knows that at the end of the day. All right, one more, and then we're going to get to uh, our buddy Mike Golick Jr. All right, two things real quick. I know someone has two things. Says Kyle Candy says, I pledge $20 donation if replacement cone stays where he is until cone gets back. Upon his arrival, cone Spartan kicks replacement cone out of the chair and yells, get off my lawn. Replacement cone, what do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, replacement. That's thoughts. assault, brother. Yeah, I agree. Well, I, I agree. agree. Well, <laughs> we'd have to, you know, find somewhere to <laughs> bury the body, but we'll get to that Talk later. That. All right, Tyler Hurley, five dollar donation. He says he's riding with the fear. Yes, let's get that under Jake at one already. Hmm, I'm at one already. Yeah, you are. I said it. Yeah, you did. What? See, this is a problem. I didn't even know that I said That's it. That's why it's great. Here's a no. I'm That's not looking at you the rest of the time. I'm not. You and didn't this is a, say it yet. I haven't said it yet. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. When? Earlier in the show, the the, the booster club told me. You call them liars? They missed Look it in the camera control. and call them liars. After the huh? monologue? Look at the camera and call them liars. Was it after the monologue? Yes. Really? Yeah. I don't believe you. Control that's a, room disagrees. Yeah, that's a, that's a, the control room right now, there's a dispute going on whether I said it well, or not. Well, look, this y- y- y'all don't matter when it comes to this, guy. Y- yes, they do. No, they don't. This that's is a booster club and us. That's the only backing I got. It's a mean, booster club and us. Blaine. No, they just worry about those call-ins. I right? need happy just need. They also have that Dr. Evil button where if they press it, your chair just, you drop in. I'll turn into Will Ferrell. You can't kill me. Yeah. You shot me. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and bring in our buddy Mike Golick Jr. from DraftKings and the Gojo Show. We're talking about some bets, player props uh, for the game as well. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful footage. All right, everybody, very excited to bring in a guy we've had on many times. Haven't been able to catch up with him in a while, so we're excited to get him here as we get to the conference championship uh, round of the NFL as we march toward the Super Bowl. And yes, David Cohn is here now. Magic. Ta-da. 
All right, we are actually recording this. I want to give everybody a heads up. We have Mike Golick Jr. in here, our buddy from DraftKings, The Gojo Show. Uh, does a tremendous job, hell of a player at Notre Dame. Uh, and, and we're going to break down some lines. But we are recording this on Thursday. I don't know magic. Well, any magic that I'll tell you uh, to get David Cohn here. But, Mike, very excited to get you back on again. Yes, the same magic that I, I think burrowed itself into my face. I feel like it's been long enough to where we're at that part of the movie where it skips ahead, and I've been living in the woods for a while and clearly look <laughs> yeah. like it now. Yeah, it's like, he, it's like that movie Pig with Nicolas Cage, and you just go out there and live in the woods and find it. But, you know, uh, I'm the king of segues, Mike, so speaking of Burrow, the Bengals got one against the Chiefs. Uh, on Sunday, yeah, it's a late game. The Eagles play at two. But when I look at the, the spreads and the lines on, on the beautiful – smorgasbord and amalgamation of delicious, deliciousness that is DraftKings Sportsbook. Use that code booster, by the way. Uh, I just don't know how I don't take this over at 47 and a half. I mean, Joe Burrow's shown me that he can, whether it's raining, whether it's sleeting, whether it's snowing, uh, or that one thing where the Avengers had to fight Thanos and those guys coming out of the sky, he's still going to score points. I know Mahomes is beat up, but if anybody can get around a little bit of a bum ankle, uh, it's Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid. How do I not just take everything I own and put it on this over 47 and a half? No, I, I'm with you on that one. I think uh, neither of these teams, and when you look back at what's recently gone on with the Bengals, right, you go all the way back a couple of rounds, the only time we've really seen them stymied was against a Ravens defense that was really starting to peak towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't think the Chiefs are going to have a ton of consistent answers on that side of the ball. The last time they played, they sat back, they let Joe Burrow pick them apart underneath, kind of like the Bills did, and were able to be effective. And I think as much as anything with the Mahomes ankle on the other side, Tons of respect for Lou Anarumo and the Bengals' defense. But at the same time, you saw even when it was Henny time in the last game, yeah. Andy Reid immediately kicked into that secondary game plan he's got. The offense looked a little bit different. He understood how to make it work with a different resource and commodity at quarterback. And I think if there's any adjustment they've got to make with Patrick, a week to game plan for Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy is a lifetime, and they'll have something ready that'll produce plenty of points. For sure. I mean, they, they're as exotic as anybody gets around the line of scrimmage through the pass game. To me, the thing that makes Andy Reid and Eric Bannemi and them so dangerous is what they're able to do in the red zone. Yeah, Patrick is going to extend plays and make great plays down the field and hit Travis over the middle, but being able to use Jarek McKinnon and now Kadarius Tony. I mean, hell, they made Clyde Edwards-Alaire look like James White with the Patriots mm -hmm. back in the day with what, what he did in the red zone uh, and close to the line of scrimmage, but also this quarterback battle. And I talked about this uh, at the beginning of the week with Joe Burrow. And I get Patrick Mahomes and them, they're like the 90s Braves. They dominate the division. They, they dominate the AFC West, just like the Braves dominated the NL East. But when I look at Burrow, he's 3-0 and against Mahomes, beat him last year in this exact same game, and he's dead inside. I mean, I'm looking at the Bengals right now. They're plus one. Mike, how do you kill something that's dead inside? Uh, you don't right now. You just sit back and accept that, uh, again, I feel like as much as Bengals fans will tell you, to the point you just made. We don't need a bum ankle on Patrick Mahomes to go beat this guy. We've done it each of the last three or four times that this has happened. I still think that makes a world of difference when it yep. comes to especially this year's Kansas City Chiefs team because of they mortgaging their future on Patrick Mahomes in a lot of ways. They've become especially reliant on him this year, and he's been up to the task. I cannot stress enough. He's going to win the MVP because that bet was the right one for them. But at the same time, again, I just think overall, the Bengals have a really firm understanding of the limitations of their roster right now on the offensive yeah. line, how that affects the way they go about calling offense. And then on the other side, one of the more underrated defensive fronts in football right now, I think that Bengals D line has given them a lot of flexibility, has given big Lou a lot of flexibility to dial up some pretty interesting exotics that frustrated um, Josh Allen last week. And this week, I don't know if you're going to have that same effect. Joe, you know, Patrick Mahomes a little more mature in the stage of quarterbacking, even mm -hmm. as a space alien talent that he's at. But yes, I, I like the Bengals in this one. I, I think they are primed to move on to back-to-back -back, uh, Super Bowls. And while I still don't think Joe Burrow leapfrogs Patrick Mahomes as the best quarterback in the NFL by any means, I think we enter into an interesting area where his first three years start to look an awful lot similar to Patrick's first three years. That's exactly right. DJ Reader, maybe the most underrated D lineman in the league. Go ahead, Kelly. No doubt. Well, Mike, you're talking about the over under 47 and a half with the Bengals and Chiefs. I mean, I'm looking at this Eagles 49ers over under at only a point less, 46 and a half. And I'm, I'm shaking my head here because I think we can agree that the Eagles 49ers, those are the two best defenses remaining in the playoffs. You know, do you think this is an automatic hammer on the under here, or is this a situation? where you have a Shanahan-Sirianni battle and uh, maybe the over hits. 
No, I, I'm looking at the under on this one too. I just think on both sides, you know, we don't want to get too drunk off the Kool-Aid of last week with the Eagles, where not only were they going up against a strength on weakness and their rushing attack and O-line versus the Giants rush defense that had been bad all year that we all, I think, maybe overlooked a little bit coming off that Vikings matchup. They took advantage of a matchup game script wise. You had the early fourth down decision, but backfired by the Giants, the interception by Daniel Jones on the next drive. It snowballed out of control quick for them to rack up a lot of yardage. This is going to be a different story, I think, this weekend. And on the other side, too, you look at the injury report for the 49ers. Elijah Mitchell and Christian McCaffrey haven't been practicing much this week. This is a banged up backfield. As much as we talk about the injuries for Mahomes, the 49ers right now are feeling some of the physical effects of that slugfest they had with the Cowboys last weekend. And so I think all of that trends towards the under as we look at this one. Two things here. One, what's your favorite bet of the weekend? And second, when you think Jalen Hurts in college, do you think <laughs> Alabama or Oklahoma? Tone started a war. I didn't are, mean to start we, a war. Or now, stop the ceasefire, excuse yeah, me. I didn't mean to start a war, but Ooh, we're going to get to the bottom of All it. All right, I was going to say I like this one because I, I think of him as the Alabama quarterback. Because you're a rational I, football fan, you know? Oh, God. So, wait, how? Where where is the division in the room here on Bama versus Oklahoma? Because I understand the thought <laughs> yeah. process that he was a Heisman finalist when he was at Oklahoma, so there is a bit of a difference here. Yeah, I, I'm with – Cone basically just stated that he played at both schools, and for lack of a better yeah. term, he broke a record that was at Alabama, and then also an Oklahoma fans came out of the woodwork. <laughs> the way I look at it, it's like this. All right, Jalen Hurts graduated from the University of Alabama got his degree in communication, and then went to Oklahoma and got his PhD in quarterbacking, and it turned him into a 50, the 53rd overall pick in the second round. Now, if he was uh, going out there and working, you know, as a broadcaster or something <laughs> in the communications field, I would say he is an Al that's an Alabama guy that came out to be a broadcaster, even if, even if he went to Oklahoma uh, to get his PhD in communication, but he didn't. He would not have gotten drafted where he got drafted. He would not have had the opportunity that he had as early as he got it if he did not go to Oklahoma, in my opinion. So when I think of Jalen Hurts, I think of an Oklahoma quarterback because no, you left. You said you were going out yeah. to get and milk, there's no and Auburn you never hate in came that back. at all. There's no Auburn. No, in there that actually at all. isn't. Well, he, I watched Alabama think about it, I was like, like all right, could fix all of this in his NFL intro if he would just say one of the Alabama. Or Oklahoma. <laughs> he's smart. He says his high school. He won't do it because he's smart, smart yeah, Mike. Smart That's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> I can say the one thing about Jalen Hurts and the reason why I'd probably cast my vote for him in the future of his uh, presidential campaign is because he has always understood exactly how to play the room. I'll never forget. I got to MC the Heisman dinner the night before they gave out the award <laughs> and all these other guys walk in there Joe Burrow's got his letter jacket on the guys from Ohio State have their polos on and in walks Jalen Hurts in a blazer nicer than anything I was wearing mm. he had the turtleneck underneath it the guy just had the air about him so you know damn well he's not going to give everybody an inch here he's the perfect diplomat and the perfect guy to sit in the middle of this uh firestorm you've created it's here. It, it's it's like it's like they say I'm not a businessman I'm a business exactly man. And mm -hmm. your your favorite bet of the weekend? Uh, you talked about it. It's that under in the Eagles Niners game, man. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to go searching for points based on who's involved there. And I also want to give the credit too on the other side. We talked so much about that Niners, the number one overall defense, D'Amico Ryan's, who you know is getting circled by everyone on their wish list for the uh, head coach to be poached over this offseason. And I want to give some credit to that Eagles defensive front too. You look at Hassan Reddick. I mean, uh, he was the story of that game against the Giants. Nightmare, just harassing them every which way. He was in demon mode, and so I'd expect a lot of that to come up again uh you know Trent Williams is there on one side and that's for sure but when you've got a D-line that's a little different than the Niners D-line it's got four double digit sack guys it makes the calculus a little bit different about how you try and go and work that from the standpoint of Kyle Shanahan trying to help your guys out as a coordinator to, to piggyback real quick off the under that Cone was talking about if people if it goes that way which I think it will because in the red zone I think you're going to see a lot more field goals than touchdowns if I'm going to if I'm going to lay that under I don't think you'd be crazy and parlaying Jake Elliott and Robbie Gould to both kick over one and a half field goals. I mean, it, it's to me, it, you know, I, that's why not? And listen, from the Robbie Gold standpoint, too, part of that also goes to coaching. We heard Kyle Shanahan say the quiet part loud after last week. He was pretty comfortable settling in those moments there, especially understanding his quarterback who has put the ball in harm's way and not gotten burned for it yet. Mm -hmm. That that specter is always looming there. 
in a lot of places, you would see the coach try and offset that kind of move by being more aggressive on fourth down, more aggressive in the margin. And Kyle's gone the opposite way. He's mm-hmm. operated like a defensive head coach. So you're absolutely right yeah. in that. This is a coach that right now is wired and inclined to accept field goals when they come up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what happens when you blow a lead like Shanahan and them did uh, <laughs> there at the Falcons. It's amazing how that works Yeah, well, uh, no one will ever forget that. And a lot of people thought Hassan Reddick was going to be a bust. And then he got to the Eagles and started balling out. So it's great to see. I'm looking at player props right now. Let's look at this 49ers-Eagles game. I obviously think the Eagles are going to throw it a little bit more than the 49ers. Who do you like having the most receiving yards in this game? Yeah, I I mean, listen, it might be like one of those situations the squeaky wheel gets the grease. A.J. Mm -hmm. Brown didn't go full (laughs) Stephon Diggs in the last game, but kind of approached that line, basically said, yeah, I was the good soldier out there. You saw me block on that touchdown for Devonta Smith Mm -hmm. spring a little bit here. I have a feeling, especially for this week, because one of the things that's interesting to watch with how much zone the 49ers play on defense is how often the Eagles are going to lean on that RPO game there. Mm -hmm. Use Jalen Hurts and his leg to manipulate those linebackers that are phenomenal. The middle of that field is a markedly different task this week than it was last week against the Giants defense that had hockey line changed all of their line linebackers since the start of the season so AJ Brown's been their answer in a lot of spots this year last week it was get more tight ends in the flat get Devontae Smith on those bubble screens I think this week to combat some of that zone they're gonna have to attack across the middle and AJ Brown's the one built to do the dirty work I love it somehow I hit two opening first uh, well first touchdown. yeah Blaine's been yeah, he freaking did last out. weekend I want to ask do you have a good feeling about anybody who's gonna be the first touchdown scorer in each game who man yeah. all right I wasn't last weekend pretty much tight ends across the board. It was tight board. ends weekend. It was Goddard. It was Dalton Schultz. The whole, the it whole was crew. T- it was tight ends weekend. You know what? I could see this one being a running back weekend. I could see this being a Miles Sanders for the Philadelphia mm, Eagles, mm. especially with everything we talked about there. You've got all this focus on the quarterback and Jalen Hurts. I have a feeling the Niners are going to make good and damn sure. You saw Fred Werner in that clip when they brought up their defense against Zone Reed, according to Pro Football Focus, immediately hit him with the sar- kind of ar- sarcasm, immediately hit him with yeah. that snide remark. They're going to be ready for that. I'm interested to see if they're ready in the inside for Jason Kelsey and Landon Dickerson and those big hardy double teams we saw in that Giants game. Could be a lot of room in there for Miles Sanders down in the low red. Love it. Yeah, watching those guys combo up and that collision with Fred Warner is going to be, Ooh. I mean, that you might as well put the women and children to bed. That's, that's It's like Red Bayou said, former coach of Louisiana. It's, it's going to be awfully physical. physical. That's why I have Fred Warner over eight and a half sacks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tackles. Tackles. That's what he I'm did that. That'd be plus <laughs> 200 million. Correct <laughs> <laughs> the record. Go, go, I'll tell you one, my sneaky pick before uh, b- before we get you out of here. Brandon Ayuk, anytime touchdown plus 280. Everybody looks at, at the way they use Christian McCaffrey. He's a Swiss Army knife, a little bit beat up. Debo Samuel, the way they use him, which is basically the inverse of Christian McCaffrey, if you really look at it. But in the passing game, uh, Brandon Ayuk is used at every single level. They'll use him in the quick game, in the screen game. They'll use him in the intermediate game, drags, overs, basics, things like that, digs. And then they'll use him in off play action. I mean, more times than not, it looks like to me, they're running the post uh, off the boot to Brandon Ayuk almost every time. I mean, plus 280 at some point, especially if that run game isn't going as much as it normally is going, I think they look to Ayuk in the red zone and then in all three layers of the defense. At plus 280, that's pretty good odds. Uh, listen, I was a Brandon Ayuk truther last weekend and hopeful last weekend. I had a parlay tied to him. Uh, and unfortunately, the Brandon Ayuk over, I think it was 59 and a half receiving yards. Didn't hit because I thought the same reason. He only needs one. They love him on those deep overs. Mm-hmm. They're going to try and move the pocket a lot with Brock Purdy. So I think this week could be the one here. I think you're not wrong to go that route. I had the same thought process last weekend. So here's hoping and crossing fingers that this time he delivers for somebody. Yeah, so you got... you. You, you had happened to you what Jarek McKinnon did for me last weekend when I picked mm. him to score a touchdown. I didn't score for the first time in like 37 straight games. But Mike Golick Jr. Uh, does a hell of a job. The Gojo Show. Go check it out. Also on DraftKings, you'll see that pretty mug up there with some parlays attached to it two times. Every time I see it, every time I see you up there, Golick, uh, I, I go ahead and, and throw a little 10 bucks on there. So I, I'm, I'm going to do it this weekend as well. Always appreciate you coming on, my friend. Thanks for having me, fellas. Really appreciate it. Enjoy the weekend. You as well. Enjoy the football. Okay, well, we're going to go to the uh, booth review on There's whether or not I said your name yeah. earlier in the show. Let's uh, let's go ahead and bring in uh, Justine uh, okay. in New York from the control room. Rules After office. further review of the play, the ruling on the field has been overturned. I 
I did? Told you. I really Told did. You. Don't ever doubt the Booster Club, fellas. Like, they know. They God. Know. You want to know who the first Booster who came out and said it? I'm 0 for 1 on... Well, I didn't challenge your it. Your fiancé. challenged it. Your fiancé was the one who knew you said it. She Benedict Arnold me. Yeah. Are we surprised? Wow. Are we surprised? No. You're going to go against your Booster Club and the fiancé? I hope you have a great week. No. Look, I All definitely right. didn't have the high ground Probably on that one. Probably won't see you Monday. But definitely nice. didn't have the high ground on that one. Let's uh, let's go ahead over to the Booster Club. At least our boy got 25 push-ups in because I'm yeah, not saying it again. Yeah, he needs his work today. No. He needs his work no, today. I'm not saying it again. Hey, by the way, before we do that, calls in five minutes. All right? We are taking calls in five minutes. That's 8.15 a.m. Eastern, 7.15 a.m. Central. All right, Booster Club. All right, let's go to Ryan, who's choosing violence, which I respect. On of course. Morning. He says, I'll give you who's really mid. Flaming Dragon. Whoa. Who, who's in their right mind calls Top Gun and Stranger Things mid. Oh. Someone is also mid. Hashtag wake up with violence. First thing. I couldn't agree Top more, Gun, Ryan. Top Gun, it's mid. It is. You Are said Jets, Top Gun 2 is mid. Top Gun 2 is mid. Excuse me, that's what I meant. The Jet scenes are cool. Other than that, it's just it's, it's just a mediocre movie. One, they copied all the cool scenes from the first movie. Two, I don't know what the hell they were doing on the beach with that football. It's football. There's offense and defense, not whatever you always want to create in your mind. And three, I just don't think the acting was that great. And and four, everyone just gasses up Miles Teller, who's a mediocre actor. Well, here's here's where I have a problem. Here's here's where I have. How a does problem. Russia have better stuff than us? Okay, here's that's I don't get that. I I do not understand that. But you have to understand when I'm going to see Top Gun, you know I'm going to see it. I'm not going to see it for the amazing plot or the incredible Golden Globe Emmy-winning actors. I'm going to watch Jets fight against Jets. That's what I'm going to watch. So those scenes were awesome. It's like going to the football game and be like, man, the hot dogs sucked, but boy, that was a hell of a game. I'm going there to watch the game. And you got to be more specific because saying Stranger Things is mid. I didn't say that. Yes, I didn't you say did. That. I didn't, it, say, you that. Said that, I didn't uh, say that. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said the, the, it gets to the point now in season seven where it gets kind of weird because the kids are 40 Okay, years well, old. say that season seven. I of said Stranger that. Things is I literally said I that. I thought you said Stranger I Things. Never, I never love Stranger Things, but it gets to a point where the kids are 40 coming in to do, to do the show. It's just not as good anymore. It's like you can't stretch things, these things out too far or it just gets weird and mediocre. The plot was awesome. The first two seasons of Stranger Things, phenomenal. Season one might be the best season one in, in a show. Okay, in watch show. your mouth. Other than that, I mean, it just gets to a point where the suits are messed up. Okay, well, let's get uh, let, let's move on because I'm not diving down this well. I right, us go to Ben Ben Laden, aka Ben Laden. Okay, rookie card. Rookie card. Um, ten dollars. Uh, he says this is for Jake motivation to keep the under on flame. Let's go. No, Look, man. I'm locked. I'm locked. Man, like, come it's on. It's not man. happening. Like what? Like throw away the key. It's locked. He's basically George Bush. You can't trust him. What? <laughs> senior or junior? <laughs> I'm either smart enough to hide it or dumb enough not to know. Let's go senior. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you take that. Let's um, let's go do. Sister Rick says Tom Cruise is mid. I disagree with that. I think he has Tom three front teeth. Is a he is. Um, JJ says considering my Oilers lost to Columbus, my faith in this weekend NFL is low. Uh, yeah, look, hockey can get a little interesting. I was shocked they lost to the Blue Jackets, especially when I bet on them. All right, Mike RFF says Bengals versus Eagles in Super Bowl is my prediction. Joe Burrow wins the MVP, so that means he does. Well, you got half of that right. Bengals gonna be there. What I say. I'm talking about him. Mike oh, okay. said he got half that, right? You're really bull. You're really bullish on the 49ers. I am. I look. I am. It's just because you like this. Brock Purdy. You just. You I like, like the these, Niners. You like Brock. I like Purdy. the Niners. You like Kirk Cousins. You like Stetson Bennett. You just like these underdog stories. It's our well, you know, that's so why I'm the big average Joe's guy. I mean, your company then My company has shareholders. Your company doesn't have cup holders. <laughs> you want some more of those suffocated kumquat wraps? Oh God, they're delicious. Stay away from the lemon bars. <laughs> okay. One more. Um, let's go to, oh, yeah, I knew Cohen was going to chime in on this one. I believe JJ came out and says uh, that Tombstone is mid. Okay, see, now. I can feel Cone. Yeah. Just JJ, JJ. I can just feel him. JJ, I'm going to need you to hold up a little bit on that one. Tombstone, look, I'll be your Huckleberry uh, That's a on really that good one. movie. I'll be your Huckleberry on that one. Uh, Mike RFF says, uh, ask Cranico, what's the biggest sports argu argument that's between us? LeBron and Jordan? Deep down, I think you, th yeah, I think you think LeBron's the best player. I, I, I think don't. you just want, I think you just want a one. You're trailing. I'm sick of you trying to jump inside it. my Which mind. I get. You, you I keep get. this whole show. You've tried to jump inside my mind and you, figure you out why. Told I think me, like, LeBron. Look, the you're best. not getting in the computer, you dog. Told me, LeBron. You're not getting in the computer. This isn't the maze runner. You're say not going to find your way out. Say one thing off the show. You say one yeah. thing on the you'll show. Yeah. You'll be. You'll be. You'll be. You jump in my mind. You'll be don't, licking walls and on the next boat to Shutter Island. Don't. I do that anyways. I don't need to get in your mind. Okay. All right. I want to get to this. So. 
obviously, you know, college football, regular season, postseason is done. We know recruiting never stops. But the Kirby Smart speech thing, all right, we we taped something, and, and I want to make sure everybody sees this, nobody hears this. So Kirby Smart, and it wasn't before the TCU game. This was a pregame speech, and like he said, wasn't even his best one. All right, we, we reacted to it because people said that because he cussed so much, he should be fined. He should be fined for cussing so much. So, so I want to play this uh, here in a second. I do want to let you know we are taking calls right now. It's one 236 Three two two eight. Going to get you on the air soon. We're taking your prediction for one of the games. All right, you call in. Tell us the score of either the Bengals Chiefs or the Niners Eagles. If you hit it exactly, you win something. But I want to play this Kirby Smart speech reaction real quick. Let's go ahead and play it. Hey, so have you heard some of these people freaking out and saying that Kirby Smart should be fined by Georgia for his pregame speech and the amount of cussing and do your job. Find the of it. Oh yeah. You just won back-to-back national championships, destroyed TCU 65-7, to was the, the beating of a lifetime. You get in there and you hit him and you keep hitting him until you break his nose. I'd give that man a, I would triple his money for Wait, what he is. TCU fan said he should No, 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 these, yeah. these are, these TCU are. You fan. have a better these, chance of finding the Pope than you have finding Kirby Smart. That's exactly. Better exactly. chance of canceling Ugga with, with PETA. You know? Know. And, and that's not happening. Ugga's top tier. Yeah. Exactly. So that's my point. You know? But. I want to play this clip. Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley, the guys from uh, TNT, interviewed Kirby a little bit about it. Let's go ahead and play this clip. Hey, Kirby, there has been the release somehow of a pregame speech. For 365 days, I think about the in that locker room. Go out of here and Coach, I quit football after one day because I said, these dudes are crazy out here. <laughs> but if my coach had made that speech, I was like, you know, I'm going to try to tough it out. <laughs> I want to clear the record. That was not before the TCU game. So that was uh, that was leaked from a previous game. And somebody asked me what game. I said, I don't even remember because they all sound like that. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. They were all laughing when it came out. A bunch of my guys texted me and said, Coach, they ain't even heard the best one. Look, I don't know if you're watching this on TikTok, <laughs> YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. If you've ever been in a locker room and or played at a decently high level or coached, you probably don't need to listen to this next part, but I think you'll enjoy it. If you haven't, if you think that was bad, then you would be appalled at some of the things that are actually said. Kirby just said it. It's not even his best one. This is high-level college football. Next step is professional. It's not like he's saying this to a bunch of fourth graders or, or a bunch of kids going out there to play a flag football game. There are some things that are sacred. What is said in that locker room between the players and coaches, especially right before a humongous game. Now, they said this wasn't before the TCU game. It was before another game. But at this level, every game is huge. That is sacred. That's why some people are having a problem with what Deion Sanders in Colorado and, and those guys are doing, filming everything that goes on in there. I can tell you from personal experience, you want to talk about getting canceled? If you heard some of the stuff that was said in that locker room, actually, it would shock some of you. But you aren't, you aren't built good enough to handle it. That's what it takes. Okay, that it is a intense, violent sport where humongous grown men are flying at full speed and hitting each other. Sometimes you got to get somebody motivated to a point of a little bit of craziness. That's that was that was a a PG thirteen rated at best. <laughs> this is before the game started. You don't really know until you come into halftime and you're down fourteen against a team you're better in. Yeah, you, you think that was bad. Well, it comes back to anything in society today. There's a certain level of mentality you have to enter as a guy going into a football game, especially a college football game, of, of, of level, a level of physicality and violence. Every play, every play for 60 minutes, and you really don't know, you, you can't really go through it unless you've been in it, yeah. right? I mean, you don't really understand it unless you've been in it, a four-quarter fight. And especially once you get to that level, high, top-tier, SEC level, you're in a car wreck every play. Yeah, That's what it is. Well, there's different approaches from different guys, right? I mean, some coaches, some guys want to get their, their people fired up just like that. I mean, the meanest football coach I ever played for never gave a pregame speech, never, like, was, you know, rah-rah before the game started. This right here, Kirby Smart, some of those guys were ready to run through a wall. I'm ready to run it through works. a wall just hearing it, you know? Yeah. Different types for different people. You talk about halftime. Both of you guys coached. 
I found out, you know, when, when we would be down at halftime, sometimes the coaches would be even more calm because they want to figure out like what exactly is going wrong with the game plan? How can we correct this? Now you end up losing the game. Look, they're going to get on you the next week at practice for yeah. sure. How did you guys handle halftime if your team was losing? Well, it was halftime to me was was always kind of a, a rat race because everybody's going to their spots. Everybody's talking. Coaching staff gets together real quick. Then you break off offense, defense, whatever. You typically have the offense on one side of the locker room, defense on the other while everybody's getting ready. Uh, th there wasn't a whole lot of time for the rah-rah stuff until right at the very end when everybody comes up together, the head coach gets them and goes back out. A lot of times, too, the higher you go, the players realize what's wrong. So when you're talking to them, you, don't, you just don't want them to panic. That's the biggest thing if you're down or if you're up by mm -hmm. a lot. So it's a fact-finding mission. Then it's a communication relay mission. And by the time you get done with that, there's only a couple minutes before you got to go out there and stretch and get ready to go out there for the second half. So the head coach would say something, you know, quick or whatever, or, you know, say the team motto, and then we'd go out there. But to me, that pregame speech, everything that day, that week has built up to it, but everything that day from waking up and going through the, the meetings and eating the pregame meal and going out there and walking the field and seeing the other team walk the field, your emotions just keep bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. And then it kind of reaches an apex right before you go out there for the game. And I think that's what you're seeing come out with Kirby Smart. Yeah. That's real. That, yeah. Oh, that's about as real as it gets. The same thing with halftime. First you go position groups, boom. Then you go side of the ball, offense, defense. And then it come and end with the speech. And usually halftime speeches were, were my favorite speech as a player to listen to. Hmm. Especially because it'd either be a coach or it'd be a leader leader on the team, right, either side of the ball. And there's something that always hit different with me being a player as when one of your guys gets up there and gives a speech, and you can tell it's real, yeah. right, especially when you go through it with a guy every day. A coach and player relationship is one thing, but a player-player relationship is one thing, the guys that you can lean on, and you really feel that. But I'm telling you, if you think this is bad, you haven't heard the worst of it. Every lo Everybody who's ever played football and been in a locker room has heard that right there. Yeah. What's funny to me about it is that's coming from the head coach. Yeah. Most of the teams I played on, that speech is either coming from a strength trainer or a lot of times another guy on the team usually a senior like we had one guy we had one guy who was in my class that was his job he would start pacing he would be quiet at the, first he'd start yeah. pacing you knew it was about to, about to go down. well the the ones that i always that used to get me the most was you know when when i was i was coaching at, at south we'd watch the highlight film during the pregame meal and so he would have a couple people stand up before he put the highlight film on and just talk about what it meant to them you know, to play in this game and be with each other and stuff like that. That's the stuff too that really gets you focused and dialed in and ready to go. But you have, there's just something about that pregame speech, that pregame feeling that like Blaine said, it's hard to explain, but if you've been in it, you understand it. That's why the people that want to find him for this, it's hard for me to explain this to you because you don't understand it. Now, at the end of the day, do I think you're soft? Yes, I do. And I'll tell that to your face. But uh, it's hard for me to explain this to you if you haven't strapped up those pads and gone out there and really found out what it was about. So in the comments, tell us, regardless of what you're watching on, do you think Kirby Smart should be fined for cussing during the pregame uh, pre speech to a bunch of grown men who then went out? Uh, I, I want to I say this. I was just thinking about this. Do you think you can make a good living? You know how they have life coaches? All right, we're about to take some calls, but they have life coaches. Mm -hmm. I'm not really 100% sure what that is. But like coach to, me, life, to me, a, a life coach is like somebody who just, if you had somebody that gave you a pregame speech like every morning you got up to go to work, can you imagine that? Like we get up, like I get up at four in the morning, go in there, take a shower, get dressed. If I had somebody stand, standing at the door that I knew who wasn't there to rob the house or do anything bad uh, and looked at me and gave me a pregame speech every day before I went out, like would I be more, I'm already a pretty motivated person, but I think I'd be fired. Like up. I could do that. Yeah, like would somebody pay I you to say, listen, listen, for uh, $100,000 a year, okay, I know it's a lot of money, but it's going to be worth it when you're out there being the CEO of some, you know, company that you started because I got you super jacked and tan about walking outside the door. I think that could be a real thing, right? Look, I could get you going in the morning, no matter who it is. I could Me too. Going. You want to get fired up? Look, I don't care if you're a janitor or if you're the CEO of Goldman Sachs. No. I will get you super duper jacked to get out there and go just attack the day. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if there's you're, one right there. That's, there's one right there. There's a plethora. I could get in my bag extremely quickly. In that Birkin bag? That, that but let's go ahead and get in our calls bag because we got some calls waiting. And uh, PJ, producer Justine, who do we have on the bat phone? First up, we have Evan from Colorado. Mmm, Evan, what's up, man? Out there in Colorado, hopefully you're staying warm. Yeah, first I want to say Constitution here. Oh, uh, nice. What's up, my brother? What's, yeah. up, brother? what's up, brother? What's up? Saying prayers for the future, Cone. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And another uh, one for the Horde. Yes. And then, as it's Flaming Dragon Friday, 
I'm here to burn it down. Ooh. Oh, yes. Just light it on fire. Just let it go. Let it burn for days. So <laughs> NCAA officiating, especially uh, 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 particularly booth reviews, mm-hmm. as an Arkansas fan, there was the targeting call in the Kansas game, which you guys went into depth about. Ridiculous. But during the, during the basketball game against Mizzou, 45 seconds left. Mm-hmm. Devo gets a charge call. They send it to the booth. They said it was a blocking foul, but that the booth couldn't review it. They kicked Devo out of the game. The game was tied. Mizzou goes on to win the game. After the game, SEC said they, they messed up. As a fan and as a team, how do you come back from something that is easily controllable and cost our control yeah. game? No, Evan, first off, thanks for the call. The Constitution, the, you know, one of the most important documents of our time. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's where I'm at. Y'all know, you know how I feel about officials, right? The, them and politicians are the only people who don't get held accountable for their actions. They just put out a statement, and everybody forgets it. It's unbelievable. And then they talk about, oh, it's the hardest job ever. No, being a coal miner is the hardest job ever. Being a single mother that works three job is a, three jobs is the hardest job, job ever. Not determining whether it's a block or a charge when I can go look at science and video reviews. The problem is this, in my opinion. I don't think there's enough transparency. That's why I want any sport that has a booth review, I don't wanna hear Chris Collinsworth talk, I don't wanna hear any of the announcers or Tony Romo talk, I wanna hear what they're saying to each other. And if there's not a booth, if if there's a situation like you saw in the Arkansas game, and it legitimately takes, Devo's Arkansas's best player, wouldn't you agree, on offense at least? He's their best player, their best scorer. Him and Anthony Black? Anthony Black, yeah. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, in those clutch moments, Devo's the one with the ball. Like, it seems to me like Devo's the one that gets the run started. To me, somebody should either get fired or fined. Somebody should be fired for that, in my opinion. If I do a bad job, if I come on here and do a bad job, I'm going to get fired. If the, the, the person who works at the convenience store down the street goes in there and does a horrible job, even if it's just one time, a bad instance, they probably get fired. But it just seems like, that politicians and referees and anybody associated with them, they never get fired. The only one who got fired was, oh boy, Tim Donahue from the NBA because they were betting on games. Yep. That's the only way you can get fired from being an official. It's a joke. It's a joke. There's no accountability for them. It's, it's one of the biggest jokes, and well, I'm with you 100%. The, I think the particularly egregious part of the entire thing was that the booth said that they did not have the ability to review it. Yeah. It's not and, only that they got the call wrong, it's that they said they couldn't overturn it because it's not a reviewable play. Yeah, and, and listen, we know in different sports there are plays you can review and there are plays that you cannot review. But what I don't understand is how do you mess up knowing what you can review or not? That's How do you mess that Bingo. up? I don't think there should be such thing as a non-reviewable. Well, we never get you know, through like a game, everybody, though. Every, we never get through a game. Re- I mean, we have robots with cameras looking at it. Well, we should be able to review it. I think when it comes to ref, they don't get – they don't – get held up to a, the higher standard, right? They're too worried about gender equality refereeing or just being the quality of the job. It should be hard to be a referee, right, to get that yeah. job. If I see another girl get they a bad should, spot in yeah, the NFL, they, I'm Yeah, that should panic. just be held at a higher standard. You can go back to football and you can go back to, ba- uh, to basketball. It, it, they don't get held to the right standard. You should make good money because it should be hard to become a referee because you have to get it right. It's not that hard to be one but uh, on the field, but it should be hard to become one just because yeah. the limit. And the that should occupants. be your job. Like yes. these referees are also insurance salesmen. Shouldn't be like and, that. And, you know, have other jobs. No, this should be your job. All right, this should be 100% be your job. But if we're going to be able to review anything at any time, then it all needs to be expedited reviews. Like we saw in the ball games, yeah. which is fantastic. Let's do it in baseball, basketball, football, tiddlywinks. Uh, the thing where you rub two balloons together while eating a graham cracker. It doesn't matter. Uh, but Evan, we appreciate your call, my friend. Thank you. All right, all right. next up we Good. have Tyler from Iowa. Tyler from what part of Iowa, Tyler? Des Moines. Des Moines. Hey, okay, I coached in uh, at Council yeah. Bluffs at Iowa Western, so I know right by right by Omaha. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about high chai. It's a great yes. take. Yes, uh, thank you. you. I appreciate wrong. that. That's exactly um, right. What you got for us? Yeah, well, obviously, you're going to start out with a huge. I am a huge Husker fan because I live in Iowa. That makes sense. Yep, for um, sure. Yeah. And uh, in the chat and Twitter is her dizzle. Um, gotcha. So okay. I've got a few things and then a question here for you. Yeah. All right. So first off, I need Flaming Dragon to open up his dragon heart like I'm Dennis Quaid 
Take mm. me under those wings, right? Yes. First touchdown scoring bets. What's going on? Yeah, dude, you're for this you, weekend? First you've been of all, like, you see this right what here? Do we need? You see this? You're right here. Do? You're under this wing. Wow. Right? You're in the trust for you. You're, wow. you're, I think about you every morning when I get up the Dragon's part, especially on a Friday. Man, for some reason, like, uh, I was sitting in my bed the other day, and next thing I know, I looked out my window, there's a light. <laughs> just shining down next to her. We have a corner. You're getting now, abducted? Right? And for some reason, just I saw Devontae <laughs> Smith catch a pass in the corner of the end zone <laughs> in the Eagles 49ers game. So I'm going Devontae Smith. I believe it's plus 1,200 for that game. And, you know, I kept thinking in the Bengals-Chiefs uh, Bengals game, you know, I took T. Higgins last time. Uh, Jamar Chase ended up scoring, and I just don't think Jamar is going to be that guy again. I think Tyler Boyd is going to be the yeah. first touchdown score, and that's also like plus 1,400. So I'm going Devontae Smith and Tyler Boyd. Dude, if you do this again this weekend, I mean. I need it. At some point, we're going to start. We got to go. Like, One, three consult, grand. We got to consult a psychic. Yeah. It's like 300 when you walk right, up the mountain. I got yeah. it. All right. Well, uh, Tyler, you got anything right. else? Are you good, brother? Yes. Second thing, I know Cone's in the chat. I want to know if Cone has an alibi for 2014, because to me it's a little suspicious that Nebraska fires a head coach that never won less than nine games right after joining the Big Ten. So I'm thinking there's some David Michigan things going on uh, here. Yeah, Don't well, call me a conspiracy theorist. No, look, like it's more inside job vibes than the JFK assassination. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. You're the fifth person that's told me that. Yeah. So uh, we have a whole Stop book it. that we're collecting. We are going to present our case that David Cohn is actually truly David Michigan, citing examples of good things and bad things. Because a lot of people don't know, David Michigan started out as a bad guy. Yeah. He actually actually flipped the uh, whole Anakin Skywalker. It's thing like Black Adam. Said. It's a, it's amazing. It's exactly like Black Adam. I yeah. think that's really about. Well, David. you know, uh, I mean, David did come in with a cape on the other day on accident. He <laughs> quickly took it off. Like came in with his mask on a week ago. He's Green Hawk. It was the tallest, longest cape you've ever seen. Yeah, really villainous cape. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, what else got you got, it. T? Last question. Now that we've got the transfer portal and then CAA, yeah. is there any point to having a scholarship cap? I mean, you look at what Matt Rule's doing in Nebraska, bringing in almost 40 new guys. What's the point? Yeah, I, I think we have to make sure we differentiate having a scholarship cap at 85 and then being able to sign the 25 a year cap that is now taken away. I think that the 85 is, is perfect. I don't think there should be more scholarships. I don't think there should be less scholarships. I call it the Goldilocks rule. You know that porridge, oh, it's a little bit too hot. Oh, that porridge is a little bit cold. 85 to me, that porridge is just right. But they, they did a good job of marrying up, now that the new transfer rule is in, that 25 scholarship a year limit that there used to be, there isn't anymore because you're gonna have to if you're a new coach, whether you're Matt Rule or Hugh Freeze or some of these other guys coming in, you gotta flip that roster quick because people expect results quicker now and it gives you a better chance. So as, as a former coach, I'm glad they cut away the 25 a year limit rule that you can have and say, listen, if you wanna bring in 85 guys on scholarship, as long as you're at that 85, are under that 85, you can be fine. So I'm good with that 85. I'm glad they changed the 25 rule there. Uh, our good buddy, Herd Dizzle from Iowa. Stay out of that corn with, if there's kids in it, man. I don't trust it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys, for letting me into the trust tree, and best of luck to Tone and Darby Lou. Oh, uh, we appreciate you, man. You're in the trust tree. You're under the wing. Welcome to it. All right. Next, we have Jack P. from Minneapolis. Jack P. Oh, Minneapolis. Yes. Let's go. Okay. I said that about the Midwest. Well, you know, we'll talk about it later. Right, Jack. Jack, what's up? What's up? How are you guys doing? Doing uh, great, man. It's Flaming Dragon Friday, and I've only said his name one time. You said it twice. No, I haven't. I know you haven't. I okay, don't, yeah, yeah, don't do this. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't do this. Go ahead, Jack. All right, anyways, my million-dollar question to you guys is, who do you guys think is better? Who would you rather than Hurts? That's a great question. I typically get this question, Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes, and to me... It, right now, it's still Joe Burrow. Uh, we have seen greatness this year from Jalen Hurts, right? I don't want to tell. I, ta I think he, he should win the MVP, in my opinion. Now, Patrick's probably going to win it, but I think Jalen should win it. But if I'm going to build a team and I'm looking at what Joe Burrow's already accomplished, you went from 4-11 and to a Super Bowl appearance, and you're one win away from a, another Super Bowl appearance. You're 3-0 and against what's been the best team in the AFC and the Chiefs. Just look what they're doing in the AFC West. I think Joe Burrow, as a total quarterback, he runs well enough to be effective, right? We've seen Joe Burrow run effectively. Him diagnosing coverages and, and understanding now and watching him evolve each year, 
you know, seeing, I don't want to get sacked 35 times, so I get rid of the ball quicker. I just feel like Joe Burrow is a more complete quarterback, and if the run game's not working, I'll take Joe Burrow over Jalen Hurts 150,000 yeah. times. So, in a couple of years, if Jalen Hurts can continue this success, and I can watch him evolve like I've watched him evolve since college, that could change. But it's hard for me not to take Joe Burrow because when all the chips are down in the clutchest moments, even if you're facing adversity, Joe Burrow seems mm -hmm. to find a way. Well, for me, I, I feel like it comes down to what's your offensive system, right? You know, if you're a guy who likes to have the quarterback in the run game a lot, then I'm taking Jalen Hurts, kind of like the Eagles. But if you have a guy you want to sit back there and just throw it around, just uh, spray it around the field, then I'm taking Joe Burrow. Um, if, if if it's down to me, I'm taking Joey B for what just what he's done, and you could see. I know this kind of me might be contradictory a little bit, but Joe Joe Burrow's offensive line being that bad has kind of helped him a lot, especially getting the ball. You see how quick mm -hmm. Joey B is diagnosing coverages and getting the ball out because since he's gotten the NFL, he's dealt with the worst offensive line they can have possible. And they have seventy plus sacks last year. I know they're playing a little bit better now, but if it's me, I think it does come down to your offensive system. Right, but if I had to choose, I'm taking Joey B. Yeah, let, let, let me let, let me flip this one uh, to you, Jack. Think about if you put Joe Burrow on the Eagles and Jalen Hurts on the Bengals. The Bengals, in my opinion, aren't where they're at right now, and I think the Eagles are exactly where they're at right now. That is a fair point. Um, I guess a hypothetical would be, let's say, Joe Burrow loses next week and Jalen Hurts goes on to, well, let's say, just win the Super Bowl and win MVP, does that really change your guys' answers at all? Or no? it, not yet, not yet. It gets me closer to, to that mountaintop, but it's not. I've got to see it consistently. I've watched Joe Burrow now long enough to have to watch him grow and to know, know what I'm seeing. Because, uh, again, the book's out on Joe Burrow, right? Like, it, there's no more tricks with Joe Burrow. You know what you have. With Jalen Hurts, people are still trying to figure him out, and he's a little bit of an off-speed pitch, not a fastball. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but not yet, Jack. That's a great question, though, my friend. Okay. And then I had one last question, if that was all yeah. right with you guys. Go ahead. All right. I'm in Minnesota, so I got to ask, who do you think wins the Big Ten West next year, and do they have any shot at competing with the mm. Big Ten East champion? Uh, look, I, I think as long as P.J. Flex there, I'm not the biggest P.J. Flex fan in the world. That's, that's you know, make no mistake or bones about it. But he's done better at Minnesota than what I thought he would. You know, he's been able to carry that row the boat moniker and, and build it there. You know, obviously the run game at Minnesota has always been good. They've got to take that next step in the passing game. Who in the Big Ten West is going to take the next step in the passing game? Right? Right? Is it Wisconsin? Y'all going to do it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's got to be, right? You would think with Luke Fickle and, and then bringing in the coordinators that they have. But at some point, we know what Michigan and Ohio State and really Penn State, uh, even though they're losing to Sean Clifford, I like Drew Aller, what they've been able to do on, on the east side. But from the west side, I mean, uh, to me, I think Minnesota has as good a chance as anybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who really, uh, right now, when you look at the west, scares the hell out of you? I mean, Iowa doesn't scare me to death. You know, I, I think it's up for grabs right now and who's going to go out there and take it. I just feel like PJ and them have have got to go from from you know 101 to 102 in the passing game at some point, right? I'm not saying abandon the run game. I loved what Ibrahim was able to do. I thought Tanner Morgan was a pretty decent player, but it seems like they've regressed in the passing game, and they're just like everybody else on that side of the conference. You know, it's like watching the same team over and over again. Am, am I wrong? No, not at all. I feel that definitely. Well, Jack, we appreciate you, man. Call in again. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a good day. Appreciate All right, you, Jack. Jack. Appreciate you. All right, now we have Laura from Texas. Laura? Yes. Is this Laura Brown? Hey guys, what's up? What, what is, is up? up? That beef jerky is gone. Thank you for sending it. I, I was going to ask you, Michelle had left it. Yeah, no, that's that's gone. That's worth this weight in, in gold around here. Well, I will. Once I have a free weekend, I'll see about getting some more mayhem. I'll come to Oh, you you've sent us so much already. Now we'd love some more. We're not turning it down, but you know we don't want to. No, we don't want to. Uh, uh, you know, keep you too busy. I did make some this weekend for my family. I made some of the the teriyaki, and it it went over very very well. So. Oh, well, I'm already peanut butter and jelly on that one. <laughs> so my question is actually about college basketball and kind of okay. the, the transfer portal. So y'all know I'm a tech fan and we're not just on the struggle bus. We are driving the struggle bus right now. <laughs> and I think part of the, uh, part of the issue is that we've got so many young guys playing, you know, true freshmen, redshirt freshmen, sophomores, 
And as I was watching watching the way that we play versus other, you know, Big 12 teams in that gauntlet, um, I, I thought maybe there's a tendency to go to that transfer portal rather than taking a chance on, you know, having young guys out there making mistakes. And so yeah. I'm wondering if the transfer portal has the potential to really um, affect the number of young guys that actually get to play. And, you know, we know having played sports before that part of what gives you that experience is actually doing it, you know, yeah. jumping up from one level to the next. And so how do you see it going? I, I think it's especially prevalent in college basketball because you've only got five guys on the floor. Very true. But I think it could go in any in any sport. Well, Do I take yeah. the freshman who has the mm -hmm. potential to make mistakes? Do I go to the transfer portal, get a, a seasoned you know, battle-tested guy to come out and, and jump in. What do you guys yeah, think? Yeah, Laura, that's a fantastic question. We, we've talked about this a lot in football, right? We, we don't talk enough about roster management in college, college sports. That's all we talk about in the NFL, whether it's trades, free agents, signing, who's on the practice squad, who got drafted, this, that, and the other. But in college, one of the reasons that coaches have so much success, and it's really, honestly, outside of recruiting, it's the main reason is they know how to manage the roster. When we talk about Nick Saban and these other guys, the blueprint, what is that? It's roster management because you never want to lose too much at once, right? Now, sometimes circumstances dictate unforeseen things happen, especially in a sport where you can play one year and leave, like in college basketball. At least in football and in baseball, you, can, you have to play three years uh, before you can go up to the next level. When it comes down to basketball in Texas Tech, I love Coach Adams. I think he's a fantastic hire. I know you guys are 10 and 10 and 10th in the league right now, and it hasn't been what you've used to been seeing the past couple of years. I think of Texas Tech now as a basketball school. I'm sorry, but that's that's the way I think about them. Oh. One of the best defensive teams. There's a lot of similarities in the way they play and Kelvin Sampson and Houston play. But when it comes down to freshmen and older guys, just like in football, even though the roster's smaller in college basketball, I think you have to have a good mix. I think you have a good mix of young, talented guys Go to the transfer portal, plug a few holes in the ship, right? What do we always say, Lori? You hear me say it all the time. A, a head coach, you cannot build the team out of the transfer portal. Don't build the ship out of it. But you can plug holes in the boat by going to the transfer portal and getting guys to be able to see you through to that next year when the young guys are getting older and rinse and repeat. So I think the answer is a mix. We all know old guards win in March. So if you're able to mix veteran talent and leadership and that one, we call it the unteachable intangible, which is experience, you want that mix. And sometimes you gotta go through slumps every now and then because you're either too young or you missed in the portal. Right now, I just think, you know, you're seeing this young team take their lumps. Can they turn it on in the back end? You're in a conference that's got more quad one opportunities than the Tron movie. So you're gonna have your chances. And then we know the conference tournament at the end. But I know it's frustrating, but in my opinion, I think it's a good mix, Laura. Just like your beef jerky, it's a good mix. Yeah, you know, I, I have a lot of hope, and uh, we we part of our slump, too, is that we only brought back three guys from last yeah. year's team, one starter. And so that whole, basically the whole team roster was an overhaul. We had so many transfer portal guys last year that were super seniors and, and mm -hmm. didn't have any eligibility left. We lost a couple of guards to, that transferred out. You know, I mean, it was an overhaul. We had we had one returning starter back in Kevin O'Banner. The rest mm -hmm. of the of, of everyone else is is new to Texas Tech. So, yeah, I, I think that that's that's been part of it as well. Yeah. So. Well, you know, whenever you have just like anything, right? Consistent change brings new challenges. Consistent change means you have to rebuild it. But Laura, we hope you never change, and we hope you never stop sending us beef jerky as well. That's a fantastic Please question. Don't. And look, you play at LSU. You never know; they're not very good either right now. Yeah, we're we're hoping for a win this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're playing a good team to do it. We really appreciate you, Laura. I hope you know that. Hey, thanks, you guys. I appreciate you so so much. All right. Well, we'll talk to you next time. Good weekend. All right. Now we have Brian from New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Brian. I don't think I've ever talked to somebody from New Hampshire lie. before. Brian, what's up? Welcome to Trust Tree. What's going on, gentlemen? You got to slap my base on the line. Oh, oh slap my base. base. How's it going? It's so, going going great. I'm I'm still hitting the under right now, so it's going great. Yeah. And so, got to talk football. Of course, we get the Super Bowl in full swing, mm -hmm. and I and I know like everything's just. We've been seeing a lot of upsets, of course, with uh, Jacksonville taking out the Chargers, and we've got uh, 
and and we got the Bengals playing against uh, the Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles playing against uh, the 49ers this weekend. It, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting matchup. But I even though like Brock Purdy's been like a heck of a surprise when it comes to uh, playing for the 49ers, I still think Philly's very stacked. They are not going to be defeated for the Super Bowl. But as much as I don't want them to win, I think they are the favorite to win without a doubt. No, I, I look, I, I think they should be the favorite in this game. Yeah. Now, I'm not picking them, but when you look at all the, the variables and, and the things you look at when you're sizing this up and the home field advantage, yeah, uh, and you look at the health a little bit of the Niners with McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell and, and Debo, I can see why they're the favorite. I just, I don't know, the spotty senses are just just going off the charts, slap my base. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, I, I still, I have the weird spidey senses too. It's like, even though... Kansas City is still the favorite to win the AFC. I honestly, I think the Bengals could pull this off and go to the Super Bowl, but we know the the history of Cincinnati. There's no way they're going to win the Super Bowl. They, they <laughs> never have. They're just like the. the can the, Joey like, B though? Except better. Can Joey B be the Kingslayer against, against the Eagles? Our 49ers. Joe Burrow is going to be running for his life, for his life the entire yeah. game. You're not going to fluke around and block the Eagles or 49ers for four quarters. Well, but the the game that I'm the, the little game I think they're going to play back and forth is. He knows that, and I know that. Let's say the Bengals against either one of them, okay. right? Yeah, you say he's going to be running for his life. So that means I know as a defensive coordinator, if I'm going against him, you got to get the ball out quick. Mm -hmm. I want to see the battle from the defensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator on how many times you truly pre uh, press or play, maybe invert the safety versus two by two, play him down on the cornerback, and, and maybe a little press bail and things like that to get Joe Burrow to make that mistake early. That That's going to be the chess match. That well, the I 49ers want. are usually a one-high team. They like to play one-high safety. Yep. Kind of D'Amico Ryan's. D'Amico mixes it up, though. I know, but they're, they're, they're mostly They're one based high. out they of a one-high. Yeah, they, they based out a little bit high. last week. But, hey, I'm with you on the Eagles, too, my guy. I think if you stack rosters, right, I would say the 49ers have a little bit of better ro a roster, have more impact players, obviously, with the Christian McCaffrey trade. <laughs> but then what ways it comes down to me, it comes down to quarterback. And I'm sorry if I'm putting my trust and the guy who's probably going to be the runner-up for MVP, we both agree Jalen should have won it, in my uh, in our opinion. But to be to have more impact plays than Brock Purdy, sooner or later Brock Purdy has to mess up. Sooner or later, right. he's thrown a couple passes that were questionable, but no one seems to capitalize when Brock Purdy makes a mistake. If there's a team out there and a defense out there who's good enough and have the depth enough, it has to be the Eagles. Right, exactly. And I think the other thing about the Eagles, too, is, is that they definitely have been demonstrating very well that they play both offense and, and defense very well. Yeah, complimentary football, yes. Teams. Yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of these other teams, like I've been seeing, is just like, yeah, they're playing good offense, but at the same time, too, their defense is just leaving a lot of spaces. Mm -hmm. So it, it, if you don't have one without the other, I mean, you're not going to get very far. And the next thing you know, somebody's just going to overscore on top of you. And, heck, you could even get a beating just like Georgia did to TCU. But... I don't know. It, it, it's just one of those things. It's just like I see with like Cincinnati, they play great offense. I haven't really seen much of their defense. I mean, it's not sneaky. Fantastic, but it They're sneaky. Be. They they don't have names that are gonna just blow you away. I, I like Hendricks. I like Reader. Obviously, Jesse Bates, somewhat of a high, high profile guy at safety. But they just they play good when it matters. That's the difference to me with the Bengals, especially when you get closer to the red zone in the playoffs. It's they just they just flip that switch, like you said earlier. Yeah, there's just one of those. There's just one of the, and they're the same way last year, man. Just I know that's what I'm saying. Timely they turnovers are. and playing good in the red zone. The Buffalo Bills, are one of the best offenses in there, scored ten points. Yeah. 10 points again. And don't say anything about the weather because I watched the Bengals no. go up and down the yeah. field. They stayed on they schedule like the way. military. They live in that weather. Yeah, but slap my base. We appreciate right. it, my friend. All right, guys. You take it easy. Great weekend. Yeah, have a great weekend. Enjoy it up there in New Hampshire. Now we have Mr. B from Louisiana. Oh. Mr. B. Louisiana. Right. What part of Louisiana? Jackson Bayou. Oh, Ooh, let's go. I Captain love it. Captain and Thana. Come in hot. Come in hot. He he hello, hello, Jake. Is it possible to speak to Flaming Dragon? Uh, all right, here we go. Flaming, you good? I'm always good. All right, all right. The floor is open. Just don't get burned. Flaming Dragon, I, I notice sometimes when you are talking or, or doing it, it's me that you like to say, you seem to be sweating quite profusely. <laughs> I was wondering if perhaps you might need the services of an experienced water boy. Hey, how, how old are you? How I old do. are you, I do. Mr. B? I, 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 I'm 31 years old. 
Uh, okay, that's that may oh, be my favorite yes, call please, of the day. That please. may be my favorite call got of the all day. Them te- I got all them teeth and no them toothbrush. toothbrush. You ride a lawnmower to work? I, I do. I, I I do actually, and and that's actually what my mama says as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mr. B, here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to yeah. take a trip down to SCLSU today. Get on that lawnmower, leave Mama and and Steve the donkey, and you go down to SCLSU because I heard they need a water boy of their own. I, 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 I'll do that for you. It's <laughs> really good. That's it. That's, that's great. Really that's good, good, dude. I love, I'm so excited that, that that's really our inaugural good. call from the Oh, Louisiana. man. You have no idea. Mr. B, please call back. Yeah. Please anytime. call back at some time. Anytime. And you never know. Anytime. Maybe you can play a little linebacker. <laughs> but all right, guys, great job on the calls. Remember, we go, uh, we take live calls Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Very excited to be doing that. A sports show that takes calls. Wow, who'd have thought? What a great mix. But I do want to get to our huddle up. With with Papa Cone, who we need to update. Do we have any update on? He's on, still in the chat. So I mean, obviously, that the no baby news hasn't yet. Came the yet. baby hasn't come yet. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, as I die literally live on air. Let's do our huddle up segment with David Cone saying words that Muggles don't understand. All right, huddle up, boys. Here we got 12 personnel. I want gun, squeeze left, empty, H fly, three jet scat, Y rough, X climb. Chad Henney came in for an injured Patrick Mahomes and led the Kansas City Chiefs on a 98-yard touchdown drive. It was capped off by this play. Let's break it down. We're in the gun. We got 12 personnel, so one running back and two tight ends. Squeeze left, empty. This is our double snug formation. It's second and one from the goal line. This is a great man beater. H fly. We're going to go ahead and bring that halfback all the way from empty across the quarterback's face. This helps us identify coverage, which in this case, we're getting man coverage. Three jet scat. This is our pass protection, which turns into a five-man pass pro with the H and the U, which is our adjuster on this play, on a free release. Y rough X climb. Rough means our Z is on a rub route and our Y is on a flat route with the backside X on an over route. It's imperative that the Z get his head around to the quarterback so he's not penalized for a pick play in man coverage here. The goal is to get the football out of our hands as quickly as possible, which is exactly what Chad Henney does. He hits Travis Kelsey in the flat for a touchdown, capping a 98-yard drive. This is 12 personnel. Gun, squeeze left, empty, H fly, three jet scat, Y rough, X climb. Fantastic stuff there from David. How in the year of our Lord 2023 do you not cover Travis Kelsey? I don't care if you're running gun squeeze, left hip, rough dog, crime McGruff, and a dwarf named Tony. How do you not cover Travis Kelsey? You think Cone's drawing that up to the hospital right now in front of Darby? He is. Actually, we have a surprise caller. Who is it? How dare you put <laughs> oh, <it's David. laughs> What's up, Cody? David, what's up? We got the whole gang here. We're getting ready. Hey guys. How uh, Darby, Darby, what's how up? We we're getting doing? ready, getting ready for the show, huh? Are we are we close? Do we have like a timeline we're looking at or what? We're hoping around noon. So Okay. We'll yep. Yep. Like Cone, are you gonna are you gonna get the baby like taking a snap? You hey. like gun left, squeeze left, rough, rough. There, there's no can can. <laughs> yeah, there's no can can on that one. Yeah. And no audible. We're just going to stick with the play. No surprises here. But, uh, man, what a great show today, guys. Nice stuff. Miss hey, you, dude. Hey, man, uh, we miss you. But I'm going to be honest. Replacement Cone is just absolutely balling over. He won't shut up. Did Everybody... you hear Waterboy call in, well, Cone? Yeah, I did hear that. That was hilarious. <laughs> and I also, replacement Cone hasn't ever gotten a take wrong. So I guess that's a factual statement. It, it is, just like Jalen Hurts played quarterback at Alabama and Oklahoma. Hey, is, Rich, is Richard Todd there? Richard, is, when's Richard He's, coming in? Uh, this weekend. Yeah, this weekend, weekend, okay. I was going to see what he thought about Aaron Rodgers maybe trying to go to the Jets, which makes no sense to me at all. Uh, Ooh, but no, wait. You, you got anything, you, you, got anything you, you want to talk about keys to victory real quick here as we uh, wrap up for the big games this weekend? The key to victory here is to make sure that mom was comfortable. You know, yeah. that's the biggest key to victory. Make sure we get baby, baby Ava into the world. And, uh, man, y'all just keep crushing it. We'll oh, keep dude, we're – we're so excited. We're obviously going to see all the pictures. Uh, we want to be able to come up to this weekend and see you. I'm super duper excited. You want to talk about a little girl who's going right. to be protected? Yeah, the, you she's going to be have like to get through an army. The king's guard to yeah. get to get to, to get her. An army. But no, we hope everything goes good. We're praying for you guys. You know, love we love y'all. you, man. Love Thanks, y'all. love y'all. All right, y'all be good. Speaking, you know what else I love to do? Gamble on money. sports. So I'm going over to the board. 
of education. I went 0 and 2 yesterday. Oh, God, that sucks. Well, I hit Nets. it. Dude, I'm going to be honest with you. I came up here and trash college basketball. I've hit two, like, parlays over you plus four. Like, you, you do it every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you keep saying, I'm done with college basketball. And then you go up there and repeatedly bet it every day. So, like, well, you know, stop. And just here we just go. Stop doing it. Here you go. We're moving on. I'm still in the under, by the way. Hold no, on. No, you're not. Hold on. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I have not said your name more than three times. You broke it a while ago. No, d- you're lying. Thank you, control room. Thank you. You only said it once. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. What do they do after score? Look, basketball? hold on. Look, you just can't keep going to the right booth. there. I'm trying no. to play some mind games. No, down here, you can't. Guys. Play, you cannot All get right. in this vault, son. Jeez. One day Cone leaves, and next thing you know, it's just we keep breaking There's the guy. There's two people. Every three, every third play, we're reviewing something. There's two people that I can break the code and get in my mind: Dr. Seuss and I've, Alan Turing. I've lived in their head for dead. 15 years. All right, our Booster Club bets are sponsored by DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use our code Booster. That's B W O S T E R. And new customers. All right, if you bet five dollars on the NFL conference, any NFL game this weekend, there's only two. Surprise, surprise. If you bet five dollars. You get $200 in free bets instantly, regardless, win or lose. It's a great deal. It's the Michael Scott win, win, win. That's only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Here's what I got tonight. Cone's in the lead. Cone is in the lead 2-0 last night. It's coming down to it. Yeah. Uh, it so we, I want to give credit to Sercio. He keeps posting uh, like what has to happen for who to win. But uh, three out of the four of us are in the green. We're up 22 and a half units on the month. Hopping out the bed like we're possessed in 2023, Blaine. Get excited. Oh, no. All right, here we go. No, no. Still the under, still hitting. Do we have three up? or are we at two? That's we're two. We're at two. I think we're, we're at three. No, we're right? not. Booster Stop Clover, we at three? Do it. Doesn't matter. I'm not talking to you the rest of the time. Two. We're at two. Here's what I got tonight. Detroit Mercy, Antoine Davis, one of the leading scorers in the country, averaged like 27 points. They're going to play Robert Morris. How the hell can they not beat one guy? All right? Give me Detroit Mercy. Mercia Lago, plus three, and the over 145. They scored 87 points, I think, the last time they played. I need that again. I need that again. So I'm taking Detroit Mercy, plus three, and the over with Detroit Mercy, Robert Morris at 145. Who? Together, plus 272. Who's the Detroit Mercy? Detroit Mercy. Do you Do- bet WNBA? N- no. What is that? <laughs> That's a college basketball team. I Detroit swear to God. Mercy. They have the leading scorer, yes. Antoine Davis. Why have I never heard of this basketball team? Look it up. Because you don't dive as deep as I do. I'm basically Greg Luganis out here. And I'm done talking to you. Stop talking to me. I know what you're trying to do. My second bet. Let's go to the NHL. It's been just an absolute bread festival every time we've gone there. So give me the Canes and Canucks money line. That's at plus 110. All right, Cones bets. He's taking the Lightning and the Canes money line together. Excuse me, that's minus 111. And then he's trying to release the Kraken. Yeah, he's trying to release the Kraken. That's minus 115. He's taking a money line. Baby Cone, soon to be Big Brother. Yeah. Baby Cone is taking the Rangers money line at minus 155. And the New Jersey Devils get up off me at plus You're liking 125. the Canes, huh? 25. What are you picking, Flaming Dragon? What are, you, are you liking the Canes, huh? I like the Canes tonight. I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah, are I feel like they get the, the road. Oh, at home. At home. Okay, that's what I'm taking. Give me the Leafs, the Maple Leafs, and the Rangers both money line, the plus 144. I'm going to go out on a limb, all right? You know, I've been hitting the first touchdown scoring, but I also had a vision the other day of Giannis scoring the first You You had a lot of visions. Um, well, yeah, I'm basically that guy from Avengers. Avengers. It kind of, I don't even want to get it, but I can't talk about Hawkeye right now, but I'm kind of upset about it. Um, Giannis first back is plus 450. How are you going to have all those superheroes and some guy shooting a bow? How? He's got unbelievable accuracy. How? Shooting I don't know. I'm not talking to you. A we, got, we got a minute. I'm not even risking it. What do you mean you're not risking it? Dude, don't, don't be this guy. That's what I'm talking about. And I blame y'all in the booth. That's who I blame. Every little second. He Pole. Has to this. Pole. That, this. This makes it no fun. Pole or Booster Club or both. Does Jake go over three and a half? Are under three now. Oh, I'm sure they said over <laughs> 83%. That much? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All I've done is go over. All right. Over three and a half, 66%. Okay. Under 34%. The under hit, man. Guess what? Yeah. Guess what? The under hit, the 34% of y'all, thanks for the belief. Well, thanks for the belief. Can you blame this the first time the under's ever hit? You know what? Me and the Pope have in common. We both said thanks for the belief. Oh, uh-huh. He just has more money than Insert me. Insert joke. Yeah, is there anything else in the booster club we need to get to before we go? Um... Ryan Gate with a uh, $2 donation. Can Thank you get you, a quick, uh, quick preview of the Big 12 SEC Challenge? Yes, yes. What am I, I wish we'd do this in football. Let me go and pull up this schedule for you. The slate of college basketball games this weekend is an absolute showdown 
uh, when, when you look at this Big 12 uh, SEC. I know Texas plays Tennessee. I got it right here. One second, guys. Let's go. A little Saturday. All right. Here's what we got. We've got Auburn at West Virginia. Can't wait to watch them let me down. Um, we've got t- uh, t- Oklahoma is hosting Alabama. Iowa State's going to Missouri. Mm. We've got Texas Tech going to LSU. Uh, we've got um, Texas and Tennessee. Arkansas's going to Baylor. I love this. Everybody is picking the Big 12 to win this challenge. I'm picking Not the SEC. You. I'm going to SEC all day. I'm picking SEC all day. Does Auburn beat West Virginia? <laughs> Probably not. No. Probably not. Am I going to bet on that game? No. <laughs> What's the under? That's probably what I'll be taking in that game. Anything else? Um, yeah, what was in here? Da, 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 da. Uh, Isaac Rhodes says, you must have hired that life coach because you were locked in this morning. I'm lo- absolutely locked in. Um, Cody Nason, the king of getting graphic, um, wants to say the next week over-under is going to be two and a half. It's got to go down, right? Um, when do we take it down to one and a half? You got to think when Cone was here. No, it's I've got to go multiple weeks of not hitting the over. Like three and a half when you move down to two and a half. If you don't call Vegas to, to say what you I am Vegas. To, what you want the lines to be. I am Vegas. This is Vegas. The, this and this. No, Vegas, that's right? Vegas. Yeah, this, this is Vegas. They set the line. So I think if, well, a cone here, we set it at six and a half last time, and you said. That was me and cone. That's times. a parlay there. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep it at three and a half again for next week. Okay. If you go under that, we'll, we'll, we'll start to, I'll make Respect. some calls. I'll Respect. make some calls. All right. Again, I'm, I'm never going over again. So bet the under every time you will win money. We appreciate you guys. Callers, fantastic. Remember, we're going to have calls uh, calls on Monday, live calls. Uh, so whatever goes down on Sunday, we have our Sunday preview coming out as well. So check us out. That uh, starts at 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern. We really appreciate, uh, appreciate y'all. Cone, Darby, uh, David, uh, Mr. Richard, Woo! everybody. Uh, good luck. Uh, we're really excited to meet her and really, really excited uh, that you're bringing another member to the Booster Club uh, royalty, Booster Club royalty there with, with little Ava. We appreciate y'all. Remember, without you, there is no us. Subscribe. We got our interview with Peter McCullough. I'm telling you, it's probably going to make headlines everywhere with what he says yeah. that you can only find it. We'll put some of it on YouTube. Some of it we can't, but it's going to be a Daily Wire plus Daily Wire exclusive. So if you're not signed up, go sign up. You're not going to want to miss this. And like the chances of me saying this man's name over three and a half times. We're going, going, gone.